subscribe to dr khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates Hello everyone I hope you are doing great in last lecture video I have discussed about wave particle duality and de Broglie's hypothesis in this lecture video I am going to discuss about phase velocity and group velocity and the relation between them so let's get started phase and group velocity are two important and related concepts in wave mechanics they arise in quantum mechanics in the time development of state function for the continuous case that is the wave packets so let's discuss phase and group velocity let's have a look on sine and cosine wave i have already discussed in my previous lecture video about sine waves a sine wave or sinusoidal is a mathematical curve that describes a smooth periodic oscillation a sine wave is a continuous wave it is named after the function sine of which it is the graph so as shown in this graph the graphs of the sine that is solid red and the cosine dotted blue functions are sinusoids of different phases the wave function modeling a sinusoidal wave allowing for an initial phase shift phi is shown in this equation y of x t is equal to a sine of k x minus plus omega t plus phi where y is a vertical position a is a amplitude small k is angular wave number small x horizontal position variable omega is angular frequency small t is time variable and phi is a phase the value kx minus plus omega t plus phi is known as the phase of the wave where phi is the initial phase of the wave function above equation is known as a simple harmonic wave function i have already discussed this equation in my previous lecture videos the wave function is y of t is equal to a sin of 2 pi f t plus phi as omega is equal to 2 pi f therefore y of t is equal to a sine of omega t plus phi where a is amplitude the peak deviation of the function from zero f is ordinary frequency the number of oscillations or the cycles that occurs each second of time omega is angular frequency the rate of change of the function argument in units of radiations per second phase specifies in radians where its cycle the oscillation is at t is equal to zero in general the function may also have a special variable that is x small x that represents the position on the dimension on which the wave propagates and a characteristic parameter small k called wave number or a angular wave number which represents the proportionality between the angular frequency omega and the linear speed that is speed of propagation small v a non zero center amplitude capital d which is y of x t is equal to a sin of kx minus omega t plus phi plus capital d therefore the above equation we can write y of x t is equal to a sin of k x minus omega t plus phi plus capital d this equation is if the wave is moving to the right similarly y of x t is equal to a sin of k x plus omega t plus phi plus capital d this equation is for if the wave is moving to the left the wave number is related to the angular frequency hence we can write small k is equal to omega upon small v that is equal to 
2 pi f divided by small v. Therefore, we can write k is equal to 2 pi by lambda, where lambda is the wavelength, f is the frequency, and small v is the linear speed. This equation gives a sine wave for a single dimension. Now, let's see what is phase velocity. The phase velocity of a wave is the rate at which the wave propagates in some medium. This is a velocity at which the phase of any one frequency component of the wave travels. For such component, any given phase of the wave, for example, let's say crest, will appear to travel at the same velocity. The phase velocity is given in terms of wavelength that is the lambda and the time period capital T. Therefore, we can write phase velocity as small v subscript p is equal to lambda over capital T that is equal to vp is equal to nu lambda. In terms of the wave's angular frequency omega which specifies angular change per unit of time and wave number or the angular wave number that is small k which represents the proportionality between the angular frequency omega and the linear speed that is speed of propagation vp we can write vp is equal to omega upon 2 pi into 2 pi upon k just get vp is equal to omega upon k as nu is equal to omega upon 2 pi and lambda is equal to 2 pi upon k so this is the equation for the phase velocity. To understand where this equation comes from, consider a basic cosine wave y of xt is equal to a cos of kx minus omega t. After time t, the source has produced omega t upon 2 pi that is equal to ft oscillations. After the same time, the initial wave front has propagated away from the source through space to the distance small x to fit the same number of oscillations. Therefore, we can write kx is equal to omega t. Thus, the propagation velocity v is v is equal to x upon t is nothing but omega upon k. The wave would have to propagate faster when higher frequency oscillations are distributed less densely in space unless the wavelength is reduced short term. Formally, we can write phi is equal to kx minus omega t. The phase velocity would always greater than the velocity of the light. According to the theory of relativity, the velocity of any particle v should always be less than the velocity of light that is c. Thus, this result is unexpected and meaningless. Thus, phase velocity can be written as Vp is equal to omega upon k, where omega is equal to 2 pi nu is angular frequency and k is equal to 2 pi upon lambda is propagation constant. As Vp is equal to nu lambda and E is equal to h nu and P is equal to h upon lambda, so we can write rearranging these equations, we can write Vp is equal to capital E upon H into H upon P. So that is equal to E upon P. So Vp is equal to capital E upon small p. When the atomic particle velocity is non-relativistic, that is the total energy E is equal to mc square and momentum P is equal to mv, therefore the phase velocity of de Broglie wave associated with the particle can be written as Vp is equal to capital E upon small p that is equal to mc square upon mv. So by simplifying this equation we can write phase velocity Vp is equal to c square upon v. So in this equation Vp is a phase velocity and c is a speed of light and small v is a velocity of the particle. Now let's see when the atomic particle velocity is relativistic. The total energy is equal to under root of m0 square c raised to 4 plus p square c square, where m0 is the rest mass of the particle. Therefore, the phase velocity of de Broglie wave associated with the particle can be written as 
vp is equal to capital E upon P. So by simply putting the value of E in this equation, m0 square c raised to 4 plus p square c square divided by p square whole bracket raised to half. So after simplification, we can write c in bracket m0 square c square upon p square plus 1 bracket raised to half. That is equal to c in bracket m0 square c square lambda square divided by h square plus 1 raised to half as p is equal to h upon lambda so by simply putting the value of p in this equation we get this modified form in the above equation the term m0 square c square lambda square divided by h square is always a positive quantity the phase velocity of de Broglie wave associated with the atomic particle is always greater than the speed of light. So according to the theory of relativity, it is not possible that the velocity of any particle wave is greater than or equal to the velocity of light. Hence a harmonic wave of wavelength lambda cannot represent a moving atomic particle. Thus de Broglie waves cannot be harmonic waves. So this is very important. The phase velocity of a wave is the rate at which the phase of the wave propagates in space. Therefore the phase velocity of a single wave is the velocity with which a definite phase point of either crest or trough of the wave propagates in the medium. Therefore de Broglie wave is associated with every material particle. As particle moves, wave also moves. Therefore, phase velocity gives the speed with which de Broglie wave travels. Consider a particle velocity is equal to v and phase velocity for that particle vp is equal to c square upon v. For a material particle, when speed of particle is very much less than the speed of light then phase velocity vp is greater than the particle velocity which is unexpected as v should be equal to the speed of the light this is all about the phase velocity now let's see group velocity when a number of plane waves of slightly different wavelengths travel in the same direction they form wave groups or wave packets. The velocity with which the wave group advances in the medium is known as group velocity represented by small v subscript small g. Each component wave has its own phase velocity therefore vp is equal to nu lambda. The wave packet has amplitude that is large in a small region and very small outside it. The amplitude of wave packet varies with a small x and a small t. Such variation of amplitude is called the modulation of the wave. The velocity of propagation of modulation is known as group velocity. Now let's see the expression for the group velocity. Consider a group of waves consisting of two components of equal amplitude and slightly different angular velocity, let's say omega 1 and omega 2. Let the waves shown in the previous figure be represented by equations y1 is equal to a sine of omega 1 t minus k1 x and y2 is equal to a sine of omega 2t minus k2x. The superposition of these two waves is given by simply addition of these two equations y1 plus y2 is equal to a sine of omega 1t minus k1x plus a sine of omega 2t 
minus k2x. By using the trigonometric relation, sine alpha plus sine beta is equal to 2 sine of alpha plus beta by 2 into sine of alpha minus beta by 2. We can write this above equation as In this equation, omega is equal to omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 2 and k is equal to k1 plus k2 divided by 2. Whereas delta omega is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 and delta k is equal to k1 minus k2. The equation represents the resultant wave which has following two parts. First part is a wave of angular frequency omega and propagation constant k moving with a velocity vg is equal to omega upon k that is nothing but the new lambda so vg is equal to new lambda and the second part is a second wave of angular frequency delta omega by 2 and propagation constant delta k by 2 moving with a velocity vg is equal to delta omega by delta k Therefore, when delta omega and delta k are very small, we can write our equation as Vg is equal to d omega by dk. So this is the final equation for the group velocity. This equation also we can write omega Vg is equal to 2 pi dv divided by 2 pi d 1 upon lambda or vg is equal to minus lambda square dv by d lambda. So this is all about the equation of group velocity. If omega is directly proportional to k, then group velocity is exactly equal to the phase velocity. A wave of any shape will travel undistorted at this velocity. If omega is not a linear function of k, the envelope of a wave packet will become distorted as it travels. Since a wave packet contains a range of different frequencies, the group velocity will be different for different values of k. Therefore, the envelope does not move at a single velocity, but its wave number components, that is k, move at different velocities by distorting the envelope. When several plane waves get superimposed, it becomes wave packet of size delta x, it's shown in this diagram, where the energy flow and the group velocity and the phase velocity parameters are shown in this second diagram. As we know that a wave packet, that is the group of waves, is associated with a material particle. Individual waves travel inside the group with their phase velocities. A group of waves travel with velocity is known as a group velocity. A wave packet can be obtained by interference of many waves of different frequencies and amplitude near the vicinity of the particle. So we will get the high amplitude. Amplitude is attenuated away from particle. It can be shown that group velocity is equal to the particle velocity. Now let's see how group velocity vg is equal to particle velocity vp. A particle moving with velocity v is supposed to consist of group of de Broglie waves. Therefore, the group velocity of the wave packet can be written as vg is equal to d omega by dk. So this is the equation we have already seen before. So rearranging this equation, we can write vg is equal to in bracket d omega by d capital E into d capital E by dp into dp by dk. So we just simply introduced the two terms de and dp. So let's say this is the equation number one. As we know that 
capital E is equal to H nu that is equal to H into omega upon 2 pi so we can write H upon 2 pi into omega whereas H upon 2 pi is nothing but H bar hence we can write E is equal to H bar omega so after differentiation we can get d omega by de is equal to 1 upon h bar so this is equation number 2 now by using the de broglie's wave equation that is lambda is equal to h upon p we can write p is equal to h upon lambda that is equal to h into 1 upon lambda so that is equal to h into k upon 2 pi therefore we get h upon 2 pi into k whereas h upon 2 pi is nothing but the h bar so p is equal to h bar into k therefore we can write dp by dk is equal to h bar so this is the equation number 3 hence substituting equation number 2 and equation number 3 in equation number 1 we get vg is equal to 1 upon h bar in bracket de by dp into h bar so simply vg is equal to de upon dp we will get the final equation so let's say this is equation number four so for a particle with energy e is equal to half m square that is nothing but the kinetic energy so multiplying and divided by m we can rearrange this equation as e is equal to half into mv bracket square divided by m so mv square or mu is nothing but the uh, momentum so we can write p square upon twice m so e is equal to p square upon twice m this is equation number five so substituting the value of capital e that is energy we will get vg is equal to d by dp in bracket p square upon twice m bracket complete so after simplification this equation we will get vg is equal to p upon m as momentum is nothing but the mass into velocity so by rearranging this equation v is equal to p upon m so simply putting this value we will get vg is equal to v thus the de broglie wave group associated with an atomic particle travels with the same velocity as that of the particle itself so this is very important equation that is group velocity is equal to the particle velocity now let's see the relation between group velocity and the phase velocity. Let's consider a particle is moving with a velocity v and is supposed to consist of a group of de Broglie waves. For an atomic particle of rest mass m0 moving with a velocity v, the total energy and momentum are given by a simple equation E is equal to mc square. According to the theory of relativity, the m value can be written as e is equal to m0 c square upon under root of 1 minus v square upon c square and the momentum we can write p is equal to mv so m0 v divided by under root of 1 minus v square upon c square respectively so we have the values for capital e and the value for momentum p therefore the frequency of the associated de broglie wave can be written as nu is equal to e upon h as e is equal to h nu so by just simply rearranging this equation we get nu is equal to e upon h is equal to m0 c square divided by h into under root of 1 minus v square upon c square and omega is equal to 2 pi nu so by simply putting the values we'll get omega is equal to 2 pi m0 c square upon h into under root of 1 minus v square upon c square so therefore differentiating this equation we will get d omega is equal to 2 pi m0 divided by h into 1 minus v square upon c square into v into dv so this is the equation number one according to de broglie's wavelength we have equation lambda is equal to h upon p so we can simplify this equation by putting the values lambda is equal to h into 1 minus v square upon c square raised to half divided by m0 v and we can write k is equal to 2 pi by lambda that is equal to 2 pi m0 v upon h into 1 minus v square upon c square bracket raised to half therefore by differentiating this equation we can write dk is equal to 2 pi m0 upon h in square bracket 
in curly bracket 1 minus v square upon c square curly bracket complete raised to minus half dv plus v into v square upon c square in curly bracket 1 minus v square upon c square curly bracket complete raised to minus 3 by 2 into dv square bracket complete. So simply by simplifying this equation we get dk is equal to 2 pi m0 divided by h into bracket 1 minus v square upon c square bracket raised to 3 by 2 into dv. So this is the equation number 2. So dividing equation number 1 and 2 we get vg is equal to d omega by dk. So by simply putting the value of d omega and dk from equation number 1 and 2 we get vg is equal to 2 pi m0 divided by h into 1 minus v square upon c square into v into dv divided by 2 pi m0 divided by h into 1 minus v square upon c square bracket raised to 3 by 2 dv. After cancelling the common terms, we will get vg is equal to v. Thus, the de Broglie wave group associated with an atomic particle travels with the same velocity as that of the particle itself in a non-dispersive medium. This animated figure shows a wave with the group velocity and phase velocity going in different directions. The group velocity is positive while the phase velocity is a negative. This is all about the phase velocity and group velocity. In next lecture video, I will discuss about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So please don't miss my next lecture. Thank you. Below this video in the description, the link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.